We are in the zone. Special guest tonight, Associated Press sports writer John Woro and Bills alumni, Mr. Lou Picone. Hi, I'm Dave Jixer. What happened in London? The Bills head to the bye week looking for answers. We are going to break it all down. And I'm Brad Galber, and we have been taking your Twitter and Facebook questions all day long. We are in the zone. In the Zone with Robert Woods on WBBZ-TV is presented by Transitown Automotive Group, serving Western New York for over 40 years. Trust Transitown. Creekside Sales and Service Outdoor Equipment Store, your factory-authorized Cub Cadet and Mahindra dealer. Duville College, educating for life. And now from the WBBZ studio, here's co-host Dave Jixter. And good evening, I'm Dave Jixter from 97 Rock. Welcome to In The Zone. As I'd like to introduce to you, John Worrell from the Associated, Associated Press. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Dave. And Bill's alumni, Lou Picone. Thanks for coming out. John, we'll start with you. Uh, tough loss in London yesterday. Um, let's talk about coaching first. Rex Ryan. Right, and maybe it's a good thing Robert's not here. So, um, but it's... I don't, I wrote a story today that for all this talk about building a bully, this team looks, resembles a pushover of many of the 15 years that, many of the, the teams that we've seen over the 15 years. They just don't seem to be able to get it together, whether it's on offense, whether it's on defense. All that promise that we had, all that big talk bluster, <clears throat> all that hype that, 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 that we heard back in January, um, where is this bully? It's not there. It's a three and four team, and it's unacceptable to lose to Jacksonville, which was one and five going in. I don't care about the injuries, but where is Rex as a coach in, in, in getting this team together? It seems that this team has regressed. He's been saying all the right things, but it's just not showing up on the field. Like for his, a lot of defensive players wanted to play defense their way, and I think he let him loose a little bit yesterday. Well, he let him loose, but it's like it takes six games to figure out that it's maybe not the right thing to drop Mario Williams back into coverage. I mean, this is a team that had 54 sacks. I understand that sacks aren't all are, are, aren't the be all and end all to a defense, but the fact that this defense has regressed, I did I did some no I, I, I crunched some numbers. This is a defense that has allowed three or more offensive touchdowns four times this season. You know how many times they did that last year? I'm not talking about the EJ Manuel, you know, pick sixes. I'm talking about three three times they've been scored against or more in a game. They only did that three times last year. This defense has regressed, and it seemed it came back intact. What's wrong? Lupa Cohn, does Rex Ryan still have a hold in this team? First of all, you have to understand that um, Rex is new. He's got new people. He's trying to. He's trying to. He's trying to develop. Well, at one point in time, when you're developing and you're talking a lot, you got to be careful on how you set the stage because they come back and it could bite you. And I, see, I think what you're seeing between the inju injuries and the ability to get control of his team, you know, it's one thing to be a coach and a mentor and a friend. Well, you know, he's not, you want to be a friend, but you got to get, you're, you're working. This is your job. This is your livelihood. You have to understand it. You have to commit to it. You have to, you have to go out and practice like, and practice and Perfect practice makes perfect, no, it was like, it was six Ps. <laughs> perfect <laughs> practice prevents piss poor performance. That's a Noxism. <laughs> I couldn't remember, I got, I've been hit a lot. <coughs> I remember. Well, and Lou, where is the accountability? Where is the accountability? I Who? mean, he brings in all, he, he, he brings in Billy Cundiff for one week, and what, to scare? Dan Carpenter? I don't know. Where is the accountability? It, 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 what, is, what is going on here? You have people, players who are making, penal, uh, making boneheaded penalties on a consistent basis, and what, what are they doing? They're doing push-ups in practice. I don't understand. Here, here's, here's the way I, when I talk about a penalty, this is the way I used to look at it. I used to play just about everything a, a guy my size could play for the 10 years that I played in the league. Meaning that, you know, other people, if you're, and, and I was an impact player, meaning that I made things happen. No matter where I was, my job was making things happen. 
So if somebody, you remember uh, Bounty Gate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the first bounty gate when those guys were doing it. If you were a problem and you presented problem, they would put bounty on your butt. Okay, and you'd have two guys whirl swirling you and one guy coming in and cutting you. Well, a yellow flag never gave anybody back their, their career, correct? So what you do is you go up and warn them and somewhere during the game, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Look out, boy, because I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah. And it happens that way. But you don't turn around and slap them. You know, you don't give them this. The next thing is you're going to get the penalty. It's stupid. You figure out how to even the score. That would be it. Well, let me ask both of you this. I'll start with you, John, and then go back to Lou. How do you fix the issues that we have in this team? Is it too many to fix? Is it fixable? Well, injuries are, of course, an issue. And, and, and you, can't, you can't fix injuries at this point. But I just don't understand. Um, this team seems rudderless, especially on defense. And the fact that it seems that Rex Ryan, for all his defensive genius, can't understand that this that he's not he's fitting the players into a system and not fitting his system for his players. Uh, it's the player's job to understand the system. Period. Um, and usually, the best way is to take the players and put a system around what you have. Okay, but it's still the player's job and the coach's job to coach and the player's job to play. And if you're not if you're not playing up to what the coach's job, then you should be gone. That's pretty. You know, all you have to do is make an example. Somebody has a penalty and, and costs you a game. All of a sudden, he's no longer he's no longer on the squad. That used to come home to me. I mean, I I understood that language. When you start, and, and it's all about winning, right? I mean, nobody wants to go see a loser, so it's all about winning. So the winning effort should be that you understand your game, you've practiced it enough, you're going to go out there and you're, you're going to perform it as, to perfection as much as you can. All right, so we are going to take a short break here. And I should mention, Robert Woods uh, could not be here due to a family issue. He'll be back next Monday. But coming up next here on In The Zone, we will take a trip to the Duntire Digital Zone with my pal Brad Gelber. We'll be right, right back. Welcome back to In The Zone. I'm Dave Jixer from 97 Rock, along with John Worrell from the Associated Press and Lou Picone. Lou Picone, I'll start with you. E.J. Manuel, should he be an NFL quarterback or not? Well, for, for my money, the school is out on him, okay? Um, I gave him a chance. In my mind, I gave him a chance. I said, okay, he's got two starts. You know, he's coming in, he's coming in this game. Um, I'm almost, I almost want to say, for his, second, for his second half performance for a while, it looked like he was letting go of the ball. It looked like he just said, okay, forget it, I'm gonna let go of the ball, get rid of it, get it out of my hands, get it into the receiver's hands. However, he's had way too many. If, if, you're, if you're me, then you, you would understand that I couldn't afford to make a mistake, not one, because they would have cut me, okay? This guy's had so many, he's had so many opportunities, you know, it's time, it's time to really, you know, possibly, but you got nobody else. What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You got nobody else. John, last week he said EJ thought he had a solid performance, which most people would disagree with him, and then yesterday uh, was not very good. I, it's, it's the same old hesitancy. It's the bouncing yep. of passes. It's, it's, it's the inconsistencies for every throw he makes to, to, to Marcus Easley and Robert Woods. He makes a poor throw. He throws it to, the, to Paul Pozlozny. You know, he, he just, the sack that he took that led to the fumble is, when, where, is where the train just came off the rails. He did not see the cornerback coming. Why is that? This is a guy that's now at 16 starts, and I think the, the, the book is out on him. If he was Jeff Toole, he would be gone. The fact that he's a first-round pick, I think, is the reason why they have, why they may try to maintain this much patience and try to prop him up. But the hesitancy, I think he's an intelligent guy. Don't get me wrong. I like EJ. Okay. But I think he lacks instincts, and I think that's the difference. It's got nothing to do with intelligence. I can tell you that. It has something to do with the ability to interpolate motion, interpolate what you see, and create action with it. 
All right, we're going to take a trip down to the Dunn Tire Digital Zone, brought to you by, of course, Dunn Tire, the official tire dealer of the Buffalo Bills, hosted by my pal Brad Gelber. Brad, take it away. Thanks, Dave, and uh, make sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash WBBZTV and on Twitter at WBBZ. All right, let's head into Twitter now, and uh, John and Lou, you guys can both take a crack at this one. Uh, Buffalo Bills fans only wants to know, how does a loss like this affect morale as a team, and how do you even begin to bounce back from something like that? Well, I've been through <laughs> When you play 10 years, you, you go through some losing seasons where coaches get fired, people get fired. You come in, it's like a turnstile out there, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think they want that to happen. I think what you have to do is keep your head about you. You know that these people are talented. Uh, the system that they employ has got to reflect the talent that you have. The talent has been decimated by a lot of injuries. So what you got to do is you got a little bit of time to recoup, try to get the guys back and have them understand that it's our job. It's my job, it's your job, it's our job. And if we don't do our job, we're going to be gone next year. Somebody's got to have accountability. It's time for the players to actually be accountable for themselves. This isn't just Rex Ryan. This is, this is a team that has been, you know, uh, just complaining and whining and, 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 and just somebody in that room has to step up this is where we find out what the leadership of this where, this where the leadership of this team is and if they can't bounce back from this I'm sorry there's something wrong there's one thing I'd like to add to that my there's an old saying um, you know there's no I in team right well in, when my interpretation is the only thing in I is team because if I ain't there it don't matter does it so when I came in the league I had to be the very very best that I could be and by being the very best that I could be, I'm the best teammate you got. Because I'm not going to make mistakes. I'm going to know what I'm doing. Okay, so therefore, it may sound selfish, but I'm the best teammate you got because I don't make mistakes and I make things happen. Great. Sign him up. Sign, Sign me up. Him up. Somebody get this man a contract. <laughs> So to go off of that, uh, we'll go into the next question from David, and he wants to know, um, were there too many distractions for a young team this week going to London to kind of focus on game prep? No, no, there can't, I mean, there can't be distractions. I mean, they got there early to eliminate the distractions. They were, I believe, 50 miles outside of London in, in an exclusive resort in which they couldn't build on distractions. And if you're going to use, start using distractions as an excuse, well, then I'm sorry, there's something wrong with the players. There, there is no excuse, period. Not, not, when, you, not when, you, when you, it's what you chose to do, right? You selected to do that, that's your job, that's where you are right now. There is no excuse. You either do or you don't, you pass or you fail every play. That's how you're measured. Not at the end of the game. Every play should be evaluated and, you're, and should be evaluated that way. Great. I think that's all the time we have, so back to you, Dave. The Dunn Tire Digital Zone, thanks Brad. Brought to you by, of course, Dunn Tire, the official tire dealer of the Buffalo Bills. When we come back, we're gonna head on over to the Fan Zone. We'll be right back. Connect in the Fan Zone, brought to you by Sports Obsession and the Galleria Mall. And welcome back to In the Zone. It's time to go to the Fan Zone again with Brad Gelber. Thanks, Dave. And uh, one of our uh, studio audience members will win a $25 gift certificate to the Buffalo Roadhouse Grill. So uh, that's a great prize to get. And uh, we'll start over here. What's your name and where are you from? I'm uh, Zachary Paris. I'm from Alexander, New York. And you have a question for Lou and John? Yes. Um, how do you think um, the gloves that the wide receivers wear now, or any player in general, uh, changes the game than when you played when you had just like stick them and that type of product? I didn't hear. Talk I, about the gloves? I didn't hear because yeah. the, the gloves on receivers. Oh, gloves yeah. on receivers? Yeah, like compared you to like, know more like, than like I. stick -ums, do you think they have an advantage today? Well, the, the, they, they've evolved. I remember we used to wear these gloves. They were diver's gloves back when, back when I was playing. <laughs> Leather helmets, too. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> with, with no face mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with no face mask. But they had these diver's gloves, and they were thick rubber, and you'd wear them, and they had, they had the tackiness to them. I, but I haven't really had a pair of these gloves on, but when you see these guys making these one-handed snags, because that, that ball is spinning, right? 
And so to take that spin off the ball, you got to have something that is very, very tacky. They used to use stick em. I mean, that got outlawed. But, you know, you yeah. go, you run by Lester Hayes, he would go like that, and, and he was locked on you forever. You know, he just, we just follow you around like this, you know. But they outlawed that. So these gloves probably have some tack. Have you ever seen that? Have you felt these things? That yeah, doing? I played football years ago. No, 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 no. Now. What are they using now? I have no idea. You have no idea, do you? No, no, I don't. Oh, but <laughs> I'm glad you asked that yeah. question because neither of us got a clue. <laughs> Uh, there you go. None of us have a clue. <laughs> All right. The next question is, what's, what's your name and where are you from? Brian Paris. And uh, you have a question? Yes. Uh, today's modern NFL player, this is to both of you, which do you think they're more concerned with? How much money they're making or how well they play the game? That's, that's a good question. I can't answer the fact as to how much money they're making because I never made any money. Okay? So that, that answers that. I believe that uh, they're much more aware of the of the uh, uh, the constitution of their contract. Uh, you know, the, the the difference between a base contract when I was playing was fifteen thousand dollars was the base salary, base contract. Today it's four hundred and fifty or seventy something like that. Um, are they? I don't think you can play this game just for the money. I just I really don't. I think it, you know you've got to have it. You got to have it in here. They're competitors. They're all competitors. They're all, they're all competitive. However, what will you do and how far will you go? Okay, because I've got $16 million in the bank, and just how far will I go? I can't answer that question. Never been in that situation. I think there's passion, and I think they, they do play with the passion. It may have some, something to do with it. I, I, have seen, I have seen players that went beyond the limit of, of they, they risk their own physical futures just for a contract, but not, not for the contract, but because they love the game. I mean, you're going to have guys who, who get blindsided by the money and get distracted by the money and the distractions that come with it. But I also know players who have played through injuries, um, know, you know, risked their careers um, to play the game, to play, it, to, to play it, I guess, you know, to be a gamer the way they like to be. And it's, 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 it's difficult. It's a different age. But I, I, there are players that do play the game. Peyton Thanks, Manning. Yeah. Peyton Manning for one. Right. Peyton Manning doesn't have to play. He's got enough money well, in the bank. Exactly. Great you know, example. And, and when, you look at, when you look at players like that, I, you know, I truly believe that you, have, that you have the passion and you play for the, what you get out of the game and for the fan. I really do. I believe the fan has a lot of impact. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Brad. We're going to see if these guys can throw a football. We are going to go oh, to no. the Gelber and O'Connell <laughs> Hot Shot Challenge next. The Hot Shot Challenge Zone is brought to you by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Call 633-5050. All right, welcome back. We are in the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Zone. We have Team John Waro. Who's your uh, Who's your guest there, John? Chris from Baltimore. Chris, all the way from Baltimore, and you're a Bills fan. Yes. Very cool. How long are you up here for? Uh, I live here now. All right. Very good. I'm glad. So you're from Buffalo from now on, not Baltimore. All right, Lupicone. Zach from Alexander. How you doing, Zach? Excellent. You ready? Oh yeah. Okay. Now you played almost every position in the NFL. You ever played quarterback? When I was when I was in midget league. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So Team Waro will go first there. Go on up there, Chris. Good luck to you. No pressure. You're playing for a Sweetworks candy basket, but no pressure. So here we go. Oh, just a little too high. All right, John, you are up. Step right up there. And that was even higher. All right, Lupa Cone, go on up there, sir. We know you can catch it, but. All right. And one more throw here. One more throw. Oh, Team Pacone, a one nothing lead. And it looks like you guys are going to win that Sweetworks candy basket. But everybody's a winner because we also have Dave and Buster gift certificates. So the uh, Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Zone, nice job, guys. Congratulations. Next time, work on that throw. We'll be right back, and we'll talk about what's going to happen after the bye week. We'll be right back.
Get in the zone this winter with a snowblower from Creekside Sales and Service. Enter to win one now. Go to WBBZ.TV and click on the Creekside logo. One entry per person per family. Creekside Sales and Service is your factory authorized Cub Cadet and Mahindra dealer. South Transit Road, Lockport. And welcome back to In the Zone. The Bills are off next week. Then they have three AFC East divisional opponents. And first one is Miami. Miami. Then the Jets on Thursday night. And then the Patriots on Monday night. So it's going to be a tough stretch. And five of their next seven games are on the road. Can the Bills beat Miami? Right now, I don't think so. They need a lot of work. But the way Miami's playing under Dan Campbell, they're, they're a completely different team. Lupa Cohn, real quick. Well, I think I think John's right. I, I think they're going to have a tough time, but if they get better, All if right. they get better, we and if they go. get better, we got to go. Thank you for watching.